Hi, this is ENX04, and today, by popular demand, we're going to make a very versatile tree farm. This tree farm design is extremely simple, taking mere minutes to build using accessible materials and a simple layout. But don't underestimate this farm. The rates for this farm compares well against many other beginner tree farm designs that are significantly more complicated to build. But what's really interesting about this farm design is that its simplicity also gives it a surprising amount of versatility. Not only can it farm six types of overworld trees, that's oak, spruce, birch, acacia, jungle, and azalea, it can also sustainably farm crimson and warped huge fungi, the so-called nether trees, producing enough byproducts to replenish the bone meal and fungi used to run the farm. It can also farm both red and brown huge mushrooms as well, making this an incredibly useful farm that covers ten different trees and tree-like variants. When using this farm for overworld trees, the player places saplings, or azalea, onto dirt using the offhand, and then applies bone meal using the main hand, until the sapling grows into a tree. Unlike most tree farms that use leaf crushers and block streams, this farm design instead uses carefully positioned TNT explosions to directly break the logs and leaves, which greatly simplifies the overall farm design. The drops from the farm include logs, saplings, sticks, and maybe other drops, like apples, depending on the tree type. And then these items fall into a collection pool, where a water stream and bubble column brings the drops to the player, letting them replenish their sapling supply, and the excess then goes to storage. The same principles apply when farming huge fungi, or huge mushrooms, but instead of saplings, the player holds the fungus or mushroom in the offhand, and again applies bone meal using the main hand. And instead of planting on a dirt block, the target block is nylium, or podzol, depending on what you're farming. The TNT in the farm comes from a highly simplified duper, designed by Mercury. It consists of two normal pistons, an observer, a TNT block, and some redstone dust. No sticky pistons or slime blocks or coral fans are needed. You can learn more about how this duper and other simplified dupers work from a video by Scorpio, linked in the description. The farm uses a modified version of Mercury's duper that traps the activated TNT inside it after it's been duped and it holds it in place until the next activation, which then pushes the TNT out. As a result, the altitude in which the TNT finally explodes can be controlled by changing the timing interval between activations, since this determines how long the TNT is held inside the duper and how much time remains for it to fall before it explodes. When you go to turn off the farm, the last TNT in the duper explodes inside water so that the duper doesn't destroy itself. The TNT duper gets its signal from the changes in state of scaffolding. Each scaffolding block keeps track of how much it's overhanging, so flipping the supporting trapdoor at the base of the scaffolding tower starts a cascade of updates that's detected by an observer at the top that triggers the duper. The trapdoor flips back and forth based on the power it gets from a specialized clock, which is designed to change the trapdoor state in regular 28 game tick intervals. Or, by flipping this lever, the clock will instead alternate between a normal 28 game tick interval, followed by a longer 32 game tick interval. The TNT for the 32 game tick interval explodes about 5 blocks higher than the normal location that occurs with a 28 game tick interval. The lower TNT explosion is located just far enough away from the player so that the player is not injured from the explosion. And the target block where the player places the sapling, azalea, fungus, or mushroom is located just barely within the player's reach to put the growth close to the TNT blast. This obsidian block serves to shield the target block so that it's not destroyed by the TNT. And this obsidian block under the TNT explosion serves to shield many of the drops as they fall down into the collection pool so that they're not destroyed by the next TNT explosion. Protecting the drops this way allows the clock to run much faster than if you had to wait for all the drops to be collected first. The higher TNT explosion location is used when farming jungle trees, huge fungi, and huge brown mushrooms. These are special cases where it's necessary to improve the collection rate of blocks that are located at higher altitudes. Jungle leaves, for example, drop saplings at only half the rate compared to other tree types, and warp blocks on a huge fungus are especially useful because they can be composted into bone meal to make the farm sustainable. The TNT that explodes at the higher altitude can also be nudged over one block towards the trunk of the growth, so that the explosion can break even more blocks at the upper levels, which is necessary to sustainably produce enough jungle saplings, and it's also necessary to break down the large cap of the huge brown mushroom. 
This nudging device works by observing the alternating 28 game tick and 32 game tick signals that propagate up the scaffolding tower, and having the piston correctly timed to only push the falling TNT corresponding to the 32 game tick interval. Okay, let's start building. Start by finding a flat area for the build site, or leveling out the terrain. Build the border for the collection pool so that the water pool inside would be 10 by 11 blocks in horizontal size. The sides of the pool that are 11 blocks in length should run in the north-south direction, and the sides that are 10 blocks in length should run east-west. You can check the F3 screen to figure out which way that you're facing. Orienting the farm is necessary because the farm is directional due to some of the rounding in the way that the game calculates blast exposure for entities, and you'll be better off if most of the drops are to the east of the TNT blast. Place a block at each inside corner of the pool, and place water on top. You should find that the collection pool will fill up and cover everything except for the two blocks in the middle. Use the F3 screen to find the uncovered block that is further to the west, and stack six scaffolding blocks here. Go up and bridge west with another two scaffolding, and then set an obsidian block at the end. Stand on the obsidian and press F3 to bring up the debug screen. Write down the X, Y, and Z coordinates of your feet, We'll use this information later on to double-check the build. Now replace the top of the scaffolding tower with another obsidian block. Hop down to the other uncovered space in the pool and look up to place a dirt block right next to the highest scaffolding block and add another block underneath it. Break down the scaffolding and dig a hole where the two uncovered blocks are located, making it three blocks deep. Now turn to face east, away from the obsidian, and dig a tunnel five blocks long. At the end, replace the block on the floor with soul sand. Place a sign in the tunnel, one block over, at foot level, and another sign at high level. Place water at the opposite end of the tunnel, and then stand on the soul sand and remove two blocks overhead. You should see water pouring in. Just swim back up to the surface. Continue building up the walls of the water column to a height of four blocks over the surface. Place a water source on top of the column and jump in to plant kelp all the way up to the top. Go back down to the bottom and break the bottom kelp and confirm that the bubble column works. Set a vertical chain on the side facing the collection pool and place a carpet against it to cover the bubble column. Now jump down to the surface and place a trapdoor against the base of the bubble column wall, and place a solid block next to it. Put exactly 39 scaffolding into one of your hotbar slots. Set one scaffolding on the solid block, and stack the remaining 38 on top of the trapdoor. Go up to the top of the scaffolding and bridge out on five scaffolding over the collection pool. Crouch down and place a block next to the end of the scaffolding, and then bridge out on an additional six blocks. Place an observer to look at the end of the scaffolding, powering a block with a lever on top. Replace the block next to it with a trapdoor, and replace the next block with an observer to look at this trapdoor. Add three redstone dust over the remaining blocks to the end of the bridge, and place a piston on the side of it, aligned with the scaffolding. Go back to the scaffolding and power the lever so that the trapdoor is open. Add two slabs here, which is directly above the player station, to guard against phantoms, and add a torch on this observer to prevent spawns. You'll probably also find it useful to add a sign to remind you when to activate the nudging device. Stand next to the scaffolding, facing south, and stack another six scaffolding on top, and then look up to place a block on the side of the top piece of scaffolding. Go up and add one more scaffolding to the top, and then bridge out over the collection pool on an additional six blocks. The end should line up with the nudging device below. Turn and bridge out another two blocks, and then add another block at the end. Place an observer to look at the scaffolding, powering a solid block, then add a piston, an observer looking south, and then a TNT block. Add a piston on the opposite end and build up the sides and place a water source on top to hold a short column of water. Add a top slab here so that it's waterlogged, and place a solid block on top of the observer and next to it. Run redstone dust along the top down to the space next to the TNT to complete the duper. Stand on top of the duper, right over the TNT block, and confirm that your feet are at the same X and Z coordinates that you recorded earlier, and confirm that the Y level of your feet is 40 blocks higher.
Go back to the base of the scaffolding and build a collection system. Place a chest against this temporary block and expand this into a series of three double chests. Point a row of hoppers into the top of the chests and point a row of hoppers into the side of the chests. Now add another row of hoppers on top so that they point into the other hoppers over the chests. Place a trapdoor over the hopper at the end and stack signs against each other to form the sides for the water stream and remove the block in between the signs to get the water flow started. Now it's time to build the clock. Add redstone dust to each side of the block next to the trap door. Place four blocks in a square as shown and add three repeaters along the middle, set to full delay, powering the block at the end. Turn around and add a repeater here, between blocks, leaving it set to the default two game tick delay. On the other side, add another repeater and right click on it twice to set it to six game ticks of delay. Add redstone torches to the blocks on the end, and when you're ready, place a spot of redstone dust between the redstone torches, and this will start the clock and the TNT duper. In a few moments, you should see the TNT explode in an alternating pattern, exploding high over the obsidian, followed by another lower explosion right over the obsidian. Place a lever on this block and flip it down. In a few seconds, you should see that all the explosions will be at the same level, just over the obsidian block. Now place a lever next to the redstone dust at the end, and power it to shut down the clock and duper. Whenever you shut down the farm, it's important to wait for all the TNT explosions to stop before you turn it back on again. You'll need to configure a few parts of the farm depending on the type of tree or fungus or mushroom that you would like to grow. For most things that you can grow, you want this lever to be down. This includes oak, birch, spruce, acacia, azalea, and red mushroom. For jungle trees, huge fungi, and brown mushrooms, flip this lever up. Jungle trees and brown mushroom will also require you to go to the nudging device to turn it on as well. For overworld trees, place a dirt block as the target block. If you'll be planting azalea, this will convert into a rooted dirt block, and other tree types will still be able to grow on this without issue, so you don't need to change it back if you don't want to. For huge mushrooms, just use podzol instead of dirt. For huge fungus, you'll need the corresponding crimson or warped nylium block as the target, and you'll also need a matching nylium block under the obsidian. This secondary nylium block is necessary because the target nylium block can convert to netherrack if it gets a random tick while it's completely covered by another block, like a stem block. And having netherrack as the target block would break the farm since fungi cannot be planted on top of it. Thankfully, the player can bone meal the netherrack to convert it back to nylium as long as there's another nylium block nearby. Finally, you should add an iron bar against the subsidian to improve the rates when farming huge fungi. The iron bar prevents wart blocks from growing in this spot, which would keep many items from falling into the collection pool. This isn't a concern when farming overworld trees or huge mushrooms, so it's best to remove this iron bar when you're done. Now that you have everything configured, turn on the clock and climb up the scaffolding and go up against the chain. Place the sapling, azalea, fungus, or mushroom in the off hand, and the bone meal in the main hand. When farming anything other than huge brown mushrooms, just hold down the right mouse button while aiming at the target block. Press F3 and T, and let go of the mouse button during the loading screen, and the game will effectively continue holding the mouse button for you. If this doesn't work for you, you can also just use a short piece of tape to hold down your mouse button. For huge brown mushrooms, I don't recommend that you hold down the right mouse button, because when a huge brown mushroom grows, a single TNT blast probably won't be able to remove all of the blocks that were generated. And this is a problem because these leftover blocks will often get in the way and prevent the next huge brown mushroom from successfully growing, even though it still consumes bone meal to make each growth attempt. As a result, it's best to use an auto clicker, set to 20 game ticks or 1 second, so that less bone meal is wasted. When you're done using this farm, be sure to flip this lever to shut down the TNT duper, and remember that you should not turn it on again until the TNT stops exploding. If you would like to AFK for longer sessions, you'll need a few upgrades to the farm. This replenishing system will drop bone meal right next to you, so that it's picked up automatically while you farm. You just need to fill in the spaces in your inventory with other items so that the bone meal doesn't go to those inventory slots instead. 
The clock on top of the dropper can fire 18,000 times per hour, but the farm never needs that much bone meal. It throttles itself by locking the dropper when the pressure plate detects an excess of drops on top of it. At its fastest, the farm will need a bit more than 9,000 bone meal per hour. That's faster than hopper speed, so you'll need two hoppers to feed into the dropper in order to make sure that the feed rate keeps up. When farming huge fungi, you'll also need a replenishing system for the little fungi, similar to the one that you used for bone meal. It's especially important when using both replenishing systems that you position yourself in the middle between them, using the chain as a reference point, so that you can be sure to pick up drops from both sides. You can easily get fungi for the farm by composting the byproducts from farming huge fungi, especially the wart blocks. The bone meal from the composter will more than offset the bone meal it takes to run the farm, and the excess bone meal can then be used in a fungus farm, which will also give back more than enough to offset the fungi that were consumed. This is a very simple flower and fungus farm, which is a minor variant of the farm designed by Nevermind Flame. In the video description, you can find a link to the original video, along with references for other videos that are relevant to this tree farm. But most importantly, you'll also find other important information, like production rates, corrections, and updates to the farm, and it may be particularly important to check these out so that you get the most up-to-date information regarding all the different things that can be farmed. You can also stop by my Discord community to explore more about this versatile tree farm, which has already been adapted to let you farm mangrove trees, for example. I'd like to thank Madman25 for designing this, and also for all the extensive efforts that Madman has put into testing various configurations, especially for the huge fungi. Thank you. I'd also like to thank N. Collier, who's been a massive help with his detailed understanding of bone meal economics and tree farming in general. He's the admin for the Huge Fungi Huggers Discord server, which is the nether counterpart to the Tree Huggers Discord server. Both communities have a fantastic depth of knowledge about tree farms. I encourage you to stop by these communities to learn more about advanced tree farming and to visit N. Collier's YouTube channel, all linked in the video description. And of course, I'd like to thank all the members on my Discord community who have offered their suggestions to improve this farm. Thank you for your part in taking the early drafts of this farm and transforming it into something great. And finally, thank you for watching today, especially if you've subscribed, as I've just reached 100,000 subscribers just a few days prior to the release of this video, which is a milestone that I never would have imagined reaching 22 months ago when the Elegant series started. I truly appreciate all the supportive comments and words of encouragement from everyone, and I can't tell you how fulfilling it is to see so many Minecraft Elegance creations reproduced across the globe. Thank you for watching my videos, and thank you for coming back to watch again and again. See you next time.